Welcome back. And to the second issue of the day, the House of Representatives has criticized the British House of Commons over its deliberations on the hashtag NSAS protest during a former, I mean, during which a former head of state, General Yakubu Gowan, was accused of looting the Central Bank of Nigeria. The House, while vindicating Gowan, faulted the allegation by the British lawmakers as baseless and resolved to take its grievances to the House of Commons and challenge the Parliament to provide proof or apologize to Nigeria. And to discuss this, we have, um, we still have uh, Air Vice Marshal Femi Badebo, still, still part of this discussion. Good evening once again. Uh, good evening. And later on, we'll be joined by a journalist and editor, particularly, that's uh, Mr. Dipo Olayoko. But in the interim, let's get the discussion started. Uh, the first issue here is the name of General Yakub Govan. For a lot of uh, our viewers who probably may not know much about G General Yakub Govan, it was not part of our history book. We never heard about this. Probably you might need to help us what could be the link at all to this allegation by a parliamentarian in UK? Well, General Gowan was uh, what you could call a second military head of state. Um, after um, the first coup that happened in 19, on January 1966, um, when um, uh, General Wellington, um, a gentleman of Igbo abstraction, who was the most senior military officer at that time, was installed as the head of state. Uh, there were some issues that I would not like to go into here, but uh, one part of the country felt uh, that marginalized because uh, the story is that all the regional leaders were supposed to be killed, but at the end of the day, only predominantly in the northern military leaders were killed. Subsequently, a second coup took place in July the 1966. And uh, this time around, it was supposed to be a coup to right the wrongs of the first coup. And um, a relatively young uh, one who was left a colonel at that time was installed as the head of state. And uh, he quickly rose in rank to become a, uh, a four-star general. Um, it might interest you that Gowan was not even married at the time he was made head of state. So it was as a head of state that he, we had our, uh, you know, our own version of the big wedding uh, at Marina and Lagos. Subsequently, um, you know, he ruled for a number of years until um, he put in, we had... 12 states created by him, additional to the four regions. Um, and he installed a mixture of army, police, air force, and um, as governors. And for the eastern region, where there was no uh, military or police senior officer available, uh, a civilian administrator was picked for the eastern region. Everything went well until eventually um, there was rumors of uh, impropriety. Some of the governors actually uh, had empowered themselves. A few of them uh, they found to be not guilty. In fact, the one after the coup ousted him, he was, I think, somewhere in East Africa attending uh, an OAU conference. And so he had to move straight from there to... Um, I think one of the West African countries initially gave him some form of uh, an asylum, but he asylum. opted to move to the UK, where he now, um, you know, went to university and uh, all the way to PhD, where he read political science. Now, the, those who know the story at that time know that he left straight from, uh, I think it was Harare or somewhere, and straight to... Uh, this West African country and onto the UK. Uh, so he didn't even have time to stop back to Nigeria. 
talk less of having control to be able to ask somebody to move the central bank for him. Um, he arrived in London virtually a pauper. Uh, the record shows that a Nigerian who was resident there, out of respect, made an, his accommodation. He stayed in a hotel for a while, for a couple of months, and then he was moved into this house made available by this Nigerian. And um, stories point to the fact that even for the school fees of his children, Nigerians continue to rally around and support and pay fees. And that's how, um, that's how he stayed for the whole period he was in the UK. Okay. So for someone to now say that he took the whole of Nigerian Central Bank with him to London um, is, is, uh, is not kind at all. Okay. And of course, it is the way uh, that most of these British parliamentarians look at Nigerians. Um, you remember when um, the Prime Minister was you know, putting the, the, the Queen that, you know, Nigeria is uh, fantastically corrupt, you know? I mean, you create names, but, you know, um, even those who have taken out of our commonwealth, where have they put it? They put it okay. in the UK. Uh, they bought properties okay. in the UK. Okay, and about. it is the same UK that is making it impossible to retrieve uh, this money for them to be extradited or for those properties to, to be held. To be okay. Uh, uh, thank you for that uh, sense of history. We will come back to that. And I think it is important that you give us that background. Okay, we have Dikpo Olayoku, a journalist who has joined us. Good evening, Mr. Dikpo Olayoku. Yeah, good evening. Yeah, I'm sure you... you do ask good evening. Yeah, I'm sure you enjoy that bit of uh, hindsight that DVM has given us. <laughs> Such a slap, my brother. Uh, okay, let's look at uh, the import of that action because that seems to be where the representatives uh, have issues. Uh, though they've also mentioned the issue of answers, but we'll come back to that. But should we take this as an insult on our collective pride as Nigeria? Or because a lot of young people were excited with what they termed as revelation. I can hear you. Yeah, I didn't hear the question. Very well. I said, should we look at this statement as an insult on our collective pride as a country when a former head of state is being accused of uh, looting our commonwealth? Because a good number of young people seem to be excited. They seem to see it as a revelation rather than an insult. What is your own... Yes. Okay. Uh, uh, yes, it, it's rather an insult to... Well, those who whoever wants to believe the man. Because I think rather it is an insult to the entire UK parliament. Hmm. If a parliamentarian will take to the floor what they call the handle chamber and to make that big goof, I think that, that is an insult to them. Like the like the, my first guy said, it's very unfortunate that the UK Parliament will be used to propagate falsehood and ignorance. Yes, yeah, some people have said the man was two years old by the time the Yakub Gohan was overthrown. But why do we have history books? Why didn't he research into what he's going to say on the floor of the Hano Chamber? Uh, because uh, I am very happy Nigerians know each of their leaders. And that is why even before General Yakubu Kawan spoke, prominent Nigerians have come to tell the man that he should go and read the history book. Hmm. You see, this is one thing that this thing has shown. The, 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 you know, this is what they existed idea about us. And unfortunately, some of us key into that narrative. Could you believe that some people, perhaps you are not born that time, or maybe they didn't read history books like the parliamentarian, already key into it. But we thank God that some of us were alive, some of us witnessed this thing. I was not a kid when I was younger, I was overthrown. I was already in form five, and we knew about Nigerian history. What it took that man is just to go and read into history. Because if he knew, 
that when they are general, the one was overthrown, he enrolled in the World Week University and was carrying a plate of food like every student. Hi, Faraday. Somebody who went to England with the top of Central Bank hmm. would not be killed for food. So it, it, it's not an insult to us. It's an insult to the UK Parliament. <laughs> because if, if you want to make a comment like that, you go into research. You ask questions before you take to the, what they call adult chamber, before you can talk. So what it means is that that UK Parliament is not original, it is fake, <laughs> and it is very, very unfortunate. Okay, Nipo, I'll come back to you. Let me listen <coughs> to Mr. Uh, uh, Badi Boy again. Uh, looking at, uh, it's, it's like two of you read each other's mind, but let's look at the second issue. Uh, okay, let's just stay with Gowan. Now, uh, we, we are looking at, I also remember that the man made reference to the book, and he described it as the most powerful literature book in the world, that's talking about things fall apart. And somebody will say that, oh, this guy has a bead of huge respect for Nigeria against both of you's opinion that uh, he, he was actually insulting us. But can we also look at where he was also driving at, where he believed, where he categorized all our leaders as corrupt? Because what he's saying is they, 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 they took us for granted don't you think we've also given them that narratives as leaders now, our leaders? Well, again, it, it all has to do with history. Uh, when the white man was uh, in charge of Nigeria, what did they do? Um, they, they looted Nigeria. Um, and even when they were leaving, they put what I'll call booby traps in place. Okay, so... The, those two took over from them um, just became like the whites um, or the black masters. Um, this is what happens in government house. This is what happens so and so and so on and so forth. And they had advisors. And the first set of advisors were those who advised them to keep their money in England, take their children to uh, school in England. Even some of, the, some of the children from the north from the emirs and all who went to school in England, the parents didn't pay. The emirs didn't pay. It was some form of bribery or so, okay? And subsequently, you know, the issue of Swiss accounts and all came up. Who brought all these things in, okay? These are the same people who are supposed to be saying, no, this is not right, don't do it this way. If you know what happened to people who kept money in Swiss accounts, many of them died and lost the money. Their families had no access because they were very coded accounts, hmm. okay? And there's still a lot of funny things going on. When you talk about, you know, these people who talk about, uh, you know, they do all this kind of high-level investment banking and so on, you know? So it's about money that you don't want people to know about, and so it will happen. You know, if you ask some lawyers, they'll tell you they have accounts, secret accounts, where if you put money in a, with a lawyer, a big lawyer, he puts it in an account. Nobody, no law can force him to disclose the owner of that money. Wow. And so on. So there are a lot of things that the white man has taught us as to how to be fraudulent. They, you see, it is not so easy in their own system because their systems are better structured than ours. We are just coming into a system where we're trying to operate democracy, white democracy, in a situation, in a, in a okay. country where the larger majority do not even understand what their rights are or what can be done with it. Okay. okay. So everything that is wrong with us. Okay, I'll, I'll come back to, to you. Us. I'll come back to you and, uh, and uh, hopefully time same... will permit me. Mr. Avian Badibo, I'll come back to you before we round up. But let me go to uh, Dipo Layoko. Now, our House of Representatives have said that the, the, the British Parliament should provide proof over that allegation. Otherwise, they will require them to apologize. But from what Dipo is saying, he's saying that it is to their own shame. That's my word. That's not your word. So do you think the House of Reps will get this? Or to what extent should we take a diplomatic step on this issue? Yeah, I think the House of Reps is uh, doing, or let me say, did what's expected of them. 
Not because they expected anything from the UK Parliament, but at least they must be seen to have taken some action. Which we will, we will recall that it's over the weekend, the Nigerian government spoke to the authority, called on the UK government to apologize. And the UK government said the parliament is an independent arm of government. They have nothing to do with what they are doing. They can't compel them to do something. But that Nigerian, the UK, the UK government does not believe um, in what those guys said. Having said that, I, I, I think there is a need for the UK parliament to do a redress. Because if they continue like this, uh, it, it, it's going to be a shame on them. But you see why some of us are worried is that the British, despite all what they did to us in Africa and in Nigeria, instead of burying their heads in shame, they still had, they, they still had the God to come in the open and be talking about issues in Nigeria. Who caused the problems we have for us? The problem of uh, this issue, for uh, agitations, the problem of whatever. Who caused it? Is it the issue of corruption we are talking about? Our people will steal our money. They will take this money into your country. Lord the money there. And you are talking about corruption. Who is more corrupt to that they are among the two? <laughs> but you see, I blame some of us Nigerians. That okay. believe that our solutions will come to our, our problem comes from there. Okay. Look at what is happening in America. Over an ordinary election, the world thought, see what is happening. If it had to be in Nigeria, some people would have reached to UK, some people would have reached into America. As if America doesn't have their own problem. As if okay, Dipo, 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 before you go, let me, let me quickly take you up on this, then I will hand with uh, EVM. Um, there is this there is this angle to this story that uh, it's a global village i also recall some of those old clips of uh, uh, joe biden making a strong argument for uh, nelson mandela and the appetite in south africa then i also remember that from time to time our parliament also discuss issues that has to do with south africa that has to do with syria alone with liberia on what to do and what not to do can't we see uh, from that angle? Let them know. What, what we are saying is, when you are, they are appearing as if they are a solution to our problem, as if they are above board, that is our argument. They are not stopping, stopping anybody from discussing anything, any subject under the sun. Exactly. But when you are now appearing as if you are... Holier than thou. When, as, when in fact you are the problem, that is where some of us okay. don't, have, don't seem to agree with them. They have their own problem. Just about three or four days ago, even in England, people were protesting for lockdown. Some of the some of their protesters were arrested. We saw it on television. So they have their own domestic problems okay. that they are still grappling with. Okay, Dipo. So we don't, let us sit down and solve our own problem. Oh, beautiful. That's it. Uh, because I was going to ask for a way out. So, AVM, I'm sure you've listened to different angles because I'm looking at uh, what is wrong. These petitions were written by Nigerians based in UK. And we cannot say they don't have a stake. They have a lot of family members here. So why we all agree that that tantrum thrown against our former leader was unnecessary? But is there anything actually morally wrong or legally wrong to consider the petitions by Nigerians? Um, well, the important thing is that if you feel aggrieved, you uh, you you make your uh, you, you 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 make your case, and Nigeria has done that, and history, I believe, will judge us to go forward. Gowon himself was not going to say anything; he's a he's a fine old man now. But his son has come out and uh, written an article which. Uh, I think chose light, and a few other the other Nigerians have uh, uh, written to support the, uh, the grand old man. But uh, this is part of what I'm saying. We have two sets of Nigerians. Uh, we have Nigerians here who believe in Nigeria, and those here who believe that um, it would be better for them if they were outside the country. Okay. Then we have the Nigerians out there who 
Um, I, I don't know about you. I have a few relations outside. The kind of information they send to me about Nigeria is always very disturbing. And I'm, ha I mean, once in a while I have, to, I have to, you know, videos and so on. I have to reply to them and say, if you don't have anything good to say, please, I am here. You know, if you don't, have, it's as if you are, you are, you are, you are happy that things are going wrong in this okay. country. You know, you have settled abroad. You've got uh, your British or whatever visa. Leave us alone. But okay. they cannot. They can't seem to. To leave, us, leave alone. us alone. Thank you, you know, so much, yeah. JVM uh, <laughs> Femi Badibo. I'm so sorry my time is far spent. We have to call it a wrap. Thank you once again, uh, Air Vice Marshal Femi Badibo, a security consultant, and Deepo Olayoku for taking your time to drop your opinion on this matter. We quite appreciate both of you. Thank you for your time. Thank you, and have a lovely evening. Yeah. And uh, we will, before we go, let me just give you my own take on the issue that was discussed earlier on, just after this short break. Such statement of resignation is not just worrisome, referring to the Minister of uh, Information and Culture, Lai Mohammed. It is also scary that we are helpless. To avoid the discourse of international politics, it is incumbent on our government to partner with foreign countries willing, I repeat, willing to assist us with some firepower to conquer this insurgency once and for all, and not technically. We are sick and tired of Boko Haram being technically defeated. We want them to be defeated so that we can return to the path of peace and tranquility in all our environs, including the Northeast. And that's how far we can go on today's edition of Plus Politics. Plus Politics returns tomorrow, same time, same station. I remain yours truly, Kayode Ladeinde, saying bye for now. <laughs>